Hey everybody, Joel, Loose Droppings by ImportSauce.com. Let's go ahead and uh, tell you everything you need to know about Volvo T5 engine timing. Stick around. Okay, all the bits and bobs are suited up. It's time for timing. So, uh, there's a lot here, a lot of different ways to do it. We're gonna break down kind of all of them, right? Uh, so timing, when do you mess with timing? You mess with it when you do your timing belt. Uh, you mess with it when you do a head gasket or take your head off, which uh, would be a head gasket. Uh, in a situation like this, where you've done a full forged and uh, internals build, you are going to have to do the timing on that as well. So, uh, starting off, let's talk and show you timing marks. Uh, how to set them, how to identify them, uh, how to correct them, how to find uh, hidden timing marks, even if you, uh, you know, get lost in the woods like we did a couple times here. Um, let's start off with the crank. So, the crank. If your crank pulleys off, you will see that the oil pump has a little notch here, 12 o'clock, up and down on this little U-shaped guy. It's just uh, this guy right here that my finger's on, right? And you can see, it's a little elevated, there's a mark. That is gonna line up with, right here, this guy. So, if you take a look, and I'm looking uh, pretty much, let me uh, get dead on here, right there, right? And that will let you know that the crank is at top dead center. The oil pump does not spin, so this mark is stationary, and this will want to line up with that. Um, you know, sometimes it's good to set your timing prior, and then if you're not gonna touch anything, then just leave it and you know that it's there. Um, the first time we did a head gasket, we did not have any of these fancy tools, such as the cam locking tool, which also comes with the crank locking tools. So there's a T40 or 50 in here. You remove that and you can slide this guy in, which will lock up against uh, piston connecting rod five. And it will not allow you to, it'll allow you to spin counterclockwise and it will stop it exactly top dead center on the crank. Um, but if you don't have that tool, you can still spin it and just look and make sure that that is lined up. It's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to do with the pulley on, um, because this uh, will kind of slide all the way in and you're not gonna have any visibility in there. Um, so what we may do, and maybe not, because we have the tool now, but if we wanted, we could, uh, once this is in, we could uh, just do a little groove and a little paint uh, similar to what we did on our uh, can gears, you know, just so it's easily identifiable. Uh, another way, when we uh, had the uh, head gasket done, we did that a couple years back, is we just put a compression tester into uh, cylinder one. We dropped it in, pulled the plug out, dropped that in, and we spun it over a couple of times and we would check compression. And then that's when we would know that uh, cylinder one, which is here on the uh, passenger side or the um, left side if you're looking at the front that's when we know that the piston uh, was all the way up at top dead center by looking at a compression gauge uh, so that is the crank right over on the other side of the crank where your pressure plate and your all that stuff goes there's no marks over there there's nothing to go off of so crank locking tool helps out uh, these marks help out and a compression uh, testing gauge will also do the trick to get your uh, crank into top dead center. The other things or the only other two things that have to line up with that are going to be uh, your cams, right? Um, so the cams are uh, the cam uh, gears and behind that is going to be the whole cam and then on the back of that is the uh, sender or uh, unit for the cam position sensor. No markings on this side. Um, I guess you could look at them and based on the orientation that I have and that you'll see here, uh, you 
could uh, take a picture before and say, okay, yeah, that is our top dead center. Let's make a, mark, you know, but there's already marks on the other side. But this is important, and I'll show you why, because in our situation, when these came off for paint and for, you know, building this engine, uh, we had these spun, and these, without the bolts in, can spin around. Um so you could theoretically get these marks off of alignment. Um, but let's just talk about the generic marks, uh, assuming you are not taking the cam gears off. Uh, if you are, then we have a video, watch our video on uh, replacing these seals because we talk about the marks on there as well. But we already know that for uh, lining these up, there is uh, tiny little marks. Uh, you will have a hard time finding yours and that's why we went through and we grinded these out and we put some paint on them so that you could actually see. And these marks will roughly line up with these notches. And let's see if we can get to an angle. There. And there. So, um, theoretically, if you're getting ready to start something and you've set that at TDC, then those should be uh, pretty much lined up before you disassemble. And you're going to make sure when you put it back on, that that mark uh, lines up with the mark on the plastic cover. Pretty much a straight line up and eh, not exactly, but it, it's very, very close. Um, so let's assume that you took your gears off and you, you know, hey, what do I need to do to line these up? Um, like we did and we had to scour the internet. But uh, when you pull off the sender units, let's see if we can get this one off here on the back or whatever we want to call these. There we go, there we go, there we go, All right? And just a reminder, uh, ending in 9.7 is the intake side, ending in 9.8 is the exhaust side, right? So there is, uh, these will only go on one way as opposed to the cam gears, right? So you have your uh, side to side notches on there. Let's see if we can get, uh, get you in there. Eh, side to side notches, right? three o'clock, nine o'clock. And then you have that little diagonal one up there too. And that fits into that groove at about two o'clock. Over on the uh, exhaust side, same thing. Uh, just slightly off side to side. And that one's down at about 5.30, five o'clock, almost six o'clock. So if your cam gears come off and you're like, wait a minute, I don't know the positioning. Uh, line these up, sorry, line these up. Uh, nine o'clock, three o'clock, and then over here, uh, roughly the same thing. Nine o'clock, three o'clock. It's a little off. It's supposed to be. That's fine. Um, it's not 100% dead straight. And then, you know, intake side, make sure that groove is up at, you know, two o'clock. And then over here on the exhaust side, down at 536 o'clock. And that's how you'll know that your cam assembly is straight. And then... When you torque your cam gears back on, you just make sure, okay, well, I'm getting ready to torque it down. Let's make sure that those things line up properly. Okay. So what we are going to do is we are now going to put these guys back on and we are going to make sure that our uh, marks line up. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to put our cam locking tool on so that as we're torquing and spinning there is no internal movement of the cam that would uh, have them get off of alignment um, so when you are doing a timing belt uh, you are going to start and you are going to use the cam locking tool and it's going to lock everything in so that um, you know when you're over here working and theoretically when we did it like i said we just uh, everything was off and we put everything back on and we didn't have any locking tools. We just kind of used the alignment marks. Um, and then when we fired it up, we had a, um, you know, a cam position sensor off and it happened to be off a tooth. So all we did was, um, you know, kind of spin it a little and, and, you know, it wasn't off enough that we had caused any damage. Uh, one tooth will throw, maybe even two tooth will throw that error, but it's not, catastrophic but it's enough to say hey you know it's not quite right here but um you know if you are off far enough you're going to do serious damage and be ripping your engine back apart um so 
Let's go ahead and we're gonna get our uh, cam locking tool on. We'll show you what that looks like and then we will uh, start putting our cams uh, gears on. Cam locking tool is on. Uh, we kind of mentioned it, but T30 uh, will pull those off. You're gonna have caps there, uh, which you're gonna have to pop off. They're just little single use plastic caps that cover here. Poke in with a flathead, pull that off if you need to get access in here. Again, single use. So if those are coming off, you need to make sure to have two new ones ready to go back on. Right, so cam locking tool with those grooves top dead center. Here's uh, what that looks like on the end of the tool. Has those marks and those just kind of sit on there. Um, 12 millimeter, that will bring it in. And then a six millimeter here, uh, clamps down on the top and squares everything up. Um, so, uh, that is good to go there. So now we know that these are locked into position. We can go ahead and put our uh, bolts back in. We can make sure that these are lined up to the timing marks where they need to be. And uh, our T, uh, let's see. All right, so here's our bolt. Let's see, T55. And then we're gonna go ahead and torque those down and they will not move because our cam locking tool is on. Those are all torqued down. One, 120 Newton meters on these. 88, 89 foot pounds of torque. We can see our marks line up. And now we're gonna put our brand new caps on with our brand new O-rings. 35 Newton meters or 26 foot pounds. Those are on. Timing mark still lining up. Let's go ahead and uh, put this belt on. So one thing you wanna make sure is underneath, make sure that your belt is not, you know, for some reason popped out under this. Start at the bottom and we will uh, make sure that routing goes around the tensioner around the water pump over on this side it goes around that pulley and uh we'll do this with two hands and then show you what the proper routing is and then we will talk lastly about tensioner settings and alignment okay so uh we got that on a little tricky but essentially you're just gonna grab this guy and kind of move it and it will loosen the tension here and allow you to kind of slip that on. Try to keep the belt as tight as possible as we did it. And the next thing we uh, did was we took our 30 mil ratchet uh, socket and we just turned just a smidge clockwise, which really tensioned up the uh, drive side or the leading side of the belt because there's no adjustments on this side of it. So we wanna make sure that is nice and tight and how it should be. And then we're gonna come over here and do the adjustments and the uh, tension on here. Uh, so that's easy enough. It is going to be your 12 mil uh, to tighten this thing. So it's a little bit loose right now. And your six millimeter um, Allen key, right? And that's gonna go into here and allow, and I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, this is your setting mark, this little wheel that does move and just does create the tension. You can see it right there. It moves. Um, so what we need to do is that is our temperature setting. So there's three settings that Volvo gives you based on um, below uh, this and uh, above that and ambient temperature, uh, running temperature, all of these things. Uh, this is at ambient temperature and we are about 50 degrees. Uh, so based on that, we need this temperature mark to be right about there for the tension. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to use our Allen key to turn until it gets there and uh, kind of hold it there. And then we need to tighten that 12 mil all the way down. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so for our temperature, 50 degrees, we ended up here slightly before uh, this guy was in the middle there. Um, and that has tensioned the belt. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the uh, cam locking tool off. We're gonna pull the crank locking tool out. 
we are going to do two rotations down there two rotations of the crank is one rotation of the uh, cam gears and then we're going to kind of see uh, if, if everything lined back up and that gives a chance for the belt to kind of settle in and uh, evenly disperse the tension that are uh, on the tension points. So uh, two turns of the crank, one turn of the cam gears uh, and everything lined back up in terms of the markings that we see there um, and then also just for good measure we come around and we put the cam locking tool back on as well and everything just slid in right where it should go. So we're gonna go ahead and take uh, this guy off. Um, and then uh, let's see what we got left to complete this timing job, which will be uh, putting our, our uh, guys back on the back and then popping our caps on there. So uh, we will go ahead and uh, pull our tools off and do that. Okay, well, we went to uh, grab a bite to eat and we lost the sun, as you can see. But we gotta keep moving. So next thing we're gonna do is suit these uh, cam position sender uh, units back on. Uh, T50 on each of those. Uh, and remember, they only go on one way uh, with that extra notch that each one of them has. And uh, torque on that, 20 newton meters or uh, about 14 pounds. And uh, remember, ending in 9.7 goes on the intake side, 9.8 on the exhaust side. Those are all suited in. Sorry, that's actually, uh, there were T30s on there. Uh, I had something else on there for some reason. Uh, next thing we're going to do is take our caps. And we're going to put those in and then uh, we'll kind of give them a little tap tap with uh, this guy and that will seat those. Those are all suited up nice and flush. Next thing we're going to do is our plug where our uh, crank locking tool was. That is a T50. Brand new crush washer on that. We just went down to the parts store and got that. Uh, so I don't have a part number on that, but, um, so we're just going to stick that in there until it crushes down. Next up is putting this, uh, engine hoist bracket back on, uh, 13 and a 17, and it's going to orientate, uh, kind of just like that. Next up, uh, coolant, uh, hose line here, fresh, uh, thread seal on there. 15 millimeter deep socket, we'll get this guy all suited up. 